Good morning, TNT. Welcome. This is our Tuesday edition. This is our very first Tuesday that we are on air yes. with you. This is a cup of Joe. My name is Joe Villafana. Bill Jackson is next to me. Mm -hmm. How is, are you? I'm great. Uh, excited about yet another week of firsts. Mm. It being premiere week on season three of A Cup of Joe. Yeah. Had a lot of fun planning this week. You did? I did. It was hectic. It was crazy. There were times I didn't think we'd make it. You were pulling over that hair of yours. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. But here we are. Here we are. Here we are. And it's Christmas. So we have a lot of stuff uh, Do you start feeling Christmas, Christmas so early? No. Because it's we, we just no. in the middle of November. No. So you, when, when do you start to feel the Christmas? Well, spirit? I may or may not have a birthday on Friday. Let's so not talk about birthdays <laughs> yet. This Maybe is Tuesday. after. But what I'm saying is oh. after, generally, because of where my birthday falls after my birthday because we need one, to one. prioritize that's when i start feeling christmas i do the same yeah my well my birthday is also soon nigh mm -hmm. um and i literally start feeling after christmas after my birthday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I do i do another one, another one. Right. it was worth it yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right um, so welcome to it uh it is terrific tuesday as we call it uh that's what we call it yeah yeah you just came up with that or you came up with that all long time ago Okay, fine. I just you just came. I just came with it. It's terrific Tuesday on a cup of Joe. Let's check out what's inside the cup. Brought to you with the kind compliments of Rani Flatbread. There we go. So we promised uh, inside of season one and inside of season two that we would take cup of Joe on the road a little bit more often. Mm. So that's what we we're trying to do. Mm. So we're going on the road inside of Shera Cup. Right. Shall I tell them where we're heading to? Yeah, we we're think. going to the Archbishop's house. I'm really excited. <laughs> We're actually going to be chatting with His Grace, yeah. Archbishop uh, Harris. And um, yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting stuff. Interesting conversation. Yes, interesting it's going to be conversation. A up close and personal, personal snapshot of the man, the journey, and pretty much the role of yeah. the office of the Archbishop. Of the Archbishop. Yeah. And priesthood. Priesthood. Priesthood, yeah, yeah, yeah. The clergy. You know, the clergy, and you know, all yeah, that type yeah. of stuff. Some people think that's all the way up there. Mm -hmm. They that. find, think it very aloof. Yeah, and that's yeah, part yeah. of the conversation that we're yeah, going to yeah, have. Gonna How have out of yeah. reach and out of touch maybe is the clergy and the church as an organization uh, yeah. in TNT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then we're going to uh, take it inside of a brand new segment. It's called Try It Tuesdays. Are you ready to try it? I'm ready to try it. You ready to try it? And it's yeah. brought you with the kind compliments of? Of yes, Brighton's that's and right. their hardware division. It, it's it's going to be a lot of unique stuff mm -hmm. um, that's going to come to the table and uh, really just show folks how simple it is to effect simple try it do yourself, it yourself, do it yourself, home nice projects. little pro um, products that will literally open your eyes in terms of, hey, I can use that for this, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, yes, Brighton's will be here with us every Tuesday. So, that's a lot of fun. And yeah. I'm really liking some of the gadgets that I've seen off camera there are lots of eats to go with it yes and that yeah. always makes me happy yeah. Yeah. uh and then for all you techno peasants and techno dudes and techno gals on the outside we uh have tech tuesday tech tuesday mm -hmm. so you've created a whole new tuesday i did a whole new tuesday a but what i would tuesday. like to know is which category do you fall into tech guy are you are you a techie mm -hmm. or are you a techno peasant Peasant. Peasant. Yeah, yeah, no, so no, this no. is a segment for you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, 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 I'm not a techie guy. I'm not even one with my phone right through and. Really, no, it's no, not. No. It's not jointing. No, hand no, like no, mine no. Is. I literally threw it away. Actually, as soon as I reach home. Reach home. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I want to get no. rid of it. I sleep. I roll over. I pick it up. No, no, that's not good, Abiyo Jackson. But how do I plan your show if I don't? <laughs> <laughs> And then we meet you back here, finally, for Talk It Out Tuesday. So you can look out for that coming up mm -hmm. as we wrap inside of our Terrific Tuesday edition of A Cup of Joe. Yeah. Terrific Tuesday is on A Cup of Joe. We're coming right back. Stay with us. We take a road trip. We head to the Archbishop House next to share a cup with Archbishop Harris. Or well, come to you, good to see our fine folks at American Stores. What's coming up inside the cup is brought to you by Kiss Rani Flatbreads. Since you're an archbishop, people are saying that the church in Trinidad is too involved in p politics. Mm -hmm. And my answer that to them is, what do you mean by p politics? Politics, the definition I have for politics, is a search for the common good. Now, uh, you seen that? You <laughs> seen that? Let me try one more thing. <laughs> Mm. 
You see that? Dry. Dry. Unbelievable. Where was this product was there? Could make some Trini favorites any day with Rani flatbread. You give some tomatoes a roast, cook in oil and seasoning five minutes at most. Give Rani a light toast, fill with choker, and be an epic host. Mmm, now that's a Rani good idea. Girl, all my furnishings are from American stores. Quality living made affordable. Come, let me take you down to American stores. At American stores this Christmas, make all your holiday wishes come true. Choose from many styles of comfortable living rooms starting at $29.99. Elegant dining rooms starting at $12.99. Relaxing bedrooms starting at $11.99. And a chance to win up to $1 million in the American stores cash queue. All at American Stores, where we make quality living affordable. So TNT, we are doing our very first road trip of this season and we are here at the Archbishop House in Porto, Spain. We are about to share a cup with Your Grace, the Archbishop of TNT, Father Joe Harris. Join me as we speak to Joe Harris. So if, if we were not here this morning, how would, it, how would your day started this morning? Well, my day normally starts at 4.30. Mm. I get up, have my <laughs> shower, say my morning prayers, and have mass at 6.30. Mm -hmm. After that, I, have, I come down uh, to the office, read the papers, then I have breakfast normally at 8. Every morning? Every sure. morning. Mm -hmm. And at 9 o'clock, I'm here in the office. It's a lot of paperwork now? A lot of paperwork. <laughs> Too much. Too much? <laughs> <laughs> I am not accustomed to yeah. do so much, so much paperwork. Yeah. But the Archdiocese has a lot of mm, administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, in Archbishop's office, all kinds of things come. Mm -hmm. So there are things both from the Archdiocese and from the country. Yeah, you're no longer attached to a parish, are you? No, 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 you, you no won't longer have time attached. in your schedule for that. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 we always let, let's go back a bit, uh, Archbishop Joe Harris. Um, always interested, always inclined religiously from when you were a young man? <laughs> Let me put it this way. I come from, from a very religious home. Mm -hmm. My parents were very religious mm -hmm. people. Uh, a few things happened along the way. I remember I was, must have been about six or seven and a neighbor died. And my mother marched us all across to pay our respects and I looked at the husband of this woman who had died and there was so much pain etched in his face that I said to myself I'm not going to go through that and in my young brain the only people who didn't have wives mm -hmm. were priests <laughs> so I said I'll become a priest <laughs> Because you didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I was also very interested in horses. Yeah. And I told my parents, in fact, I won many <laughs> a horse race in the rocking chairs at home. <laughs> so when I was about eight or nine, I was decided I was going to become a jockey, a, jockey. a champion jockey. You're serious. And then when I was about 12 years old, my father looked at me and said, son, you're too big to be a jockey, <laughs> so you, you better start thinking of something else. Something else. <laughs> I went to St. Mary's okay. and uh, Law was the thing that was on my mind. Mm. Although in the back of my mind there was always a possibility of the priesthood, my parents 
we said uh, the family rosary every night around our parents. Bed, bed. And one of the things that happened when they were praying, they always prayed that was son of priest and a daughter and that was part of That was it. part of your parents' prayer? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I always thought my eldest brother would become <laughs> the priest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's a very holy man. He's far holier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't become a priest. Yeah. He went away <laughs> to study. Right. And then when it was time to leave school, and the thing was, yeah, what will you do? What will you do? What will you do? And uh, at night, I lie in bed and uh, as if there was a voice in my head, mm -hmm. like a bass drum. You must be a priest, you must be a priest, you must be a priest, you must be a priest. So I went to Father Nicholson and I told him what I was going through. And he said to me, son, go to the seminary. If it's not f for you, mm -hmm. you will leave, you'll come back, marry <laughs> your girlfriend. But he said, if it's for you, and you don't go, mm -hmm. and your marriage doesn't work out, you'll spend the rest of your life saying, I shudder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me go and clear this from my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I went, and I'm st I stayed, I'm still here. <laughs> yes, yes. So you, you, it's fair to say that you sensed back then it was your calling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he sense back then. Yeah. If you were not a priest, let's say you dis at that point in your life you decided no, a lawyer would have been what you would have pursued law. You'd have pursued law. I would have pursued law, yeah. and my hobby would have been having a farm. A, ho a horse, yeah, yeah. You would have bred horses, all kinds. Yeah, of yeah. All kinds. horses, sheep, yeah, yeah. rabbits, goats. The horse yeah, yeah, yeah. You. You, you, as you said, you basically grew up in a, in a Catholic home. You were never really exposed to any other religious doctrines, per se, have you? Not really. No? Not really. Um, any curiosity in terms of even attempting to inquire? Change religion. Change religion. And I'm talking from a, young, from a younger man. As yeah, as a yeah. younger man. Never, never to change. Mm -hmm. The best friend I had, though, was an Anglican, and I often wondered why do people say we're better than they are? Mm. I, so that was always, it just didn't seem right. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout my life, and even now, I've had very good r relationships with people of other faiths. I have no problem mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. of other faiths. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you, your journey in Becoming or reaching this point, you've been Archbishop here in Trent Tobago for the last three years. Three years. Yeah. Your, your journey. Tell me about your journey in a nutshell um, through priesthood and, and finally at this point in time when you're the Archbishop. Well, I was ordained a priest by Archbishop Pant, and I'm the first priest uh, that he ordained. I was ordained one year before I was finished my studies. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I was finished studying, I was sent to Paraguay. Mm. And that was, uh, uh, that marked my life as a priest. Mm -hmm. I went to Paraguay during the persecution of the church. The church was very persecuted in Paraguay. How long time was it? Late 60s and through the 70s. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a dictator. Stresno, who had been dictator for about 30 years, a military dictatorship. So I was there when it was dangerous to speak out. You have to remember that was the time when the Second Vatican Council had just ended, the church had made an option for the poor. And that, of course, cut across the political 
doctrines, let's say, of the governments in South America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For a long time, the church had been very friendly with these governments. And suddenly the governments were saying, and suddenly the church was saying, wait, there's too much injustice mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So there was quite a bit of persecution going on. And a lot of it took place in the diocese where the Holy Ghost Fathers worked. And at one stage, a raid was made and a few priests were put in jail. Father Rodriguez, who was another Holy Ghost Father, he died last year. He was down there with us at the time. He was jailed. Father Peter Weyer and myself went into hiding. Mm -hmm. In Paraguay? In Paraguay. Mm -hmm. We finally came out of hiding when Father Rodriguez was released, which was about 10 days after that raid uh, was made. The governments, uh, so the French government and the Spanish government and the English government who was representing uh, Trinidad made very strong approaches to the government and we were released. Some of us, like Father Rodriguez, was confined to the city. He couldn't go to work in the country any longer. And, uh, he eventually came home. I was lucky that I remained there, but then there was a state of emergency. You couldn't be more than three people together. I worked a lot with young people. And one night they were having a barbecue and the police came and shut them down and whole host of things. Mm -hmm. So the bishop told me, before they throw you out, leave so you can come back in. Right. So I left Paraguay and did a tour through Europe and, and the United States looking for Holy Ghost Fathers to come to replace those who had to leave. Right. So it changed then from a, a Trinidad mission to an international mission. And I remained there then until 1982. Mm -hmm. In 1982, I left Paraguay and I was sent to, to Chicago to do studies, to do further studies. I spent five years there in Chicago and then came back to Trinidad in 1987 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be in charge of the formation of candidates for the Holy Ghost Fathers. I was six years doing that. I was parish priest of Aruka at that time. I was six years doing that. Then I was transferred to, to the seminary at Mount St. Benedict as a rector for six more years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I came, then I was parish priest of St. Anthony's in Pity Valley yeah. for four years. He sent me away again to do further studies, some more studies. <laughs> Came back in 2005. Mm -hmm. And I lived at Fatima College for a year. And then the Archbishop asked me to take on St. Anne's. At the same time, I was in charge of, uh, of the tribunal which is the court mm -hmm. within the church. Okay, within the church. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I was in charge of that. I was the, the judge there until I was named Lord Bishop. Right, yeah. quite a journey, quite a journey. Quite a journey. Uh, as Bishop Joharsh, we're going to take a, just a short break and sure. we're coming back. We're getting to know the man, Your Grace, Father Joe Harris. We're taking a short break on a cup of joe. We'll be right back. 
girl. All my furnishings are from American stores. Quality living made affordable. Come, let me take you down to American stores. At American stores this Christmas, make all your holiday wishes come true. Choose from many styles of comfortable living rooms starting at $29.99. Elegant dining rooms starting at $12.99. Relaxing bedrooms starting at $11.99. And a chance to win up to $1 million in the American stores cash queue. All at American stores where we make quality living affordable. I'm glad I fought with Republic. I get my load up real quick. Picture new chairs and house repairs. Picture flat screen too. A new car printed blue. This Christmas, anything you need. Republic. Anything indeed. Republic. Load up proof with speed. Republic. With anything you want, get your make it happen loan today. Anything at all, Republic. All right, we're back and getting to know the man this morning, Father oh. Joe Harris, the Archbishop here in Trent Tobago. And uh, he had quite a life leading up to this point of becoming Archbishop, as he just described us in uh, the last segment. Father, I, I, I always, you know, from men of your ilk, First a man, then a priest? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> First a man, then, First a, a, man. Priest, then yeah. a priest. That, that, that's a, a fair yeah. assessment. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. temptations. Is, is that a, 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 a factor in your life? People tend to see priests and men of the cloth as above temptations. Well, Normally, when people think of temptation, they think of sexual that, temptation. That's what comes to mind, yeah. And but there are so many others. That, those yeah. are not the major ones. You're right, no? yes, yes. The major temptation is the temptation to power, mm -hmm. to lord it over people, mm -hmm. to want to make yourself important and famous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a major t mm -hmm. temptation, not the temptation to sex, etc. No, those are, let us say, natural temptations. Mm -hmm. And I suppose all of us go through the years we call the roaring <laughs> forties, yes, yes. and you struggle with that. And mm -hmm. you look at your brothers, and you see all of them with their children, and their wife, and you say to yourself, mean to say I'm going to go through life and leave nothing behind, no children, nothing. And so that you have that temptation. But that is a temptation that passes mm -hmm. with age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> passes. Do you agree any, any regrets where that is concerned though, when you look back at your life now? Um, I know it would have been what you wanted to do, but, but looking back in retrospect? The only regret I have, as I tell people, is that I didn't do it better than I did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't have changed anything? No decisions in your life at that point in time? No, no. The, there's nothing else that I, that, that I want to, to do mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's nothing else. You went to Rome when you became Archbishop, did yes. you? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. You, you met Pope Francis. I met Pope Benedict. You met Pope Benedict. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that experience had to be a fantastic one for you. Well, it's, I never met a Pope before in my life. Right, right. <laughs> I was not here in Trinidad when uh, Pope John Paul came. Right. So uh, I, was, I never met a Pope. When I was told that John Pope Benedict wanted to name me Archbishop of Port of Spain, my reply was, well, when I was asked if I would accept, my reply was, well, I've never told a superior no, so I don't think I could tell the Pope no. no. <laughs> but it wasn't, it was a, a very humbling and in a certain sense, frightening experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you suddenly realize that t t 
in a religious sense, all of Trinidad and uh, Tobago, you, t you have a responsibility for, uh, for that. I remember people saying to me that after it was announced that I was walking around with hunched shoulders, mm. and I said to them, well, I was feeling <laughs> the weight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they, that they, resp they of, of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. But after the ordination, as I say, God is there, you realize you're not doing it alone, that you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. You're just there and Almighty God is the one who works through you. Yeah. And that is fine. What do you see as your role and the church's role in, in society here in Durant Tobago? We, we have our own unique circumstances yeah. here and challenges here. What do you see as, as it's your role? I, I remember that when Archbishop Pandan died, everybody said he was the conscience of the nation. Mm -hmm. And I said when I was named, and I continued to say it, I would like the church to be the conscience of the nation. Mm. And so I see my task as getting the church, and by church I don't mean just the archbishop and the bishop and the priests and nuns, but all the church. And the church itself has to be the conscience of our nation. Now, we all talk about the corruption in Trinidad, etc. And I've always said, corrupt politicians don't drop from the sky. Corrupt politicians come out of a corrupt people mm -hmm. and corrupt. And so the, the society made up of individuals is corrupt because the individuals in the society are corrupt. Mm -hmm. People get annoyed when I say that, mm -hmm. but I just say to them, why well, ask them, when you have come back into Trinidad from a trip, have you ever gone into the red line? <laughs> I come back in. And I see people coming in with four or five suitcases in the green line. <laughs> Nothing to declare. Nothing to declare. <laughs> so, not only often are we cheating the government, mm -hmm. we're also telling our young ones, it is okay to cheat the government. Mm -hmm. So when they get big and they cheat the government, we are all, we are all annoyed. Mm -hmm. But we have trained them from young to church. So that I want church people to be honest people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to see church people in the red line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if they have something to, to declare. declare. Yes, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. to see them in the red yeah. line. It's quite a challenge, I'm sure, um, not only in your role as the Archbishop, but the Church's role in society. That, that has to be a challenge, especially in the modern-day society that we know. That. Yes, um, people recently in some program, I guess, Hema Ramke soon said to me, since you're an Archbishop, people are saying that the Church in Trinidad is too involved in p politics. Mm -hmm. And my answer that to them is, what do you mean by politics? Politics, the definition I have for politics, is a search for the common good. And if politics is a search for the common good, all of us should be politicians, mm. searching for the common good. And therefore, as church, we have to be helping people search for the common good. That doesn't say that we get into party politics. Mm. And I suppose one of the things that pleases me is that I've been accused of being a PNM, UNC, People's Partnership, I help you never accused of being yeah. everything. Yeah. So suppose I'm doing something yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you that know? means you're neutral. Yeah. 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 yeah, I am not interested in who wins or who, what mm -hmm. I'm interested in is that we have governments in, from whom 
people receive their due. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you sensing that young people today are religiously inclined? Uh, are we losing our young people in terms of, of, of the morals that, that I mean I grew up on? You know, are we losing that? I think that you hear a lot about the bad that goes on. Mm -hmm. You don't hear a lot about the good that goes on. Mm -hmm. We have a youth department in the Archdiocese that is doing wonderful work. I have recently launched a missionary movement in the church. Mm -hmm. Not to send people overseas, but to get our young people involved in doing things for others here in Trinidad and uh, Tobago. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to Fatima, Holy Name, setting up to speak with the others mm -hmm. and young people are interested and young people want to go out. The problem is very often that parents stop young children. Mm. Oh, parents yeah. stop young children. Parents stop them. So I know for instance that some years ago Sister Rosario Haksho was running a secondary school in Matlot. Mm -hmm. She went to Fatima and uh, Holy Name and Convent and got six formers who were finishing school to go to teach at Matlot for a year or two. Mm -hmm. Many of the kids who said, I want to go, their parents said, you will not go. Mm. Because probably what? Because they're afraid mm -hmm. what's going to happen to you at Matlot. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole host of things I consider nonsense. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Matlot is far safer than uh, <laughs> movie town. Yeah. <laughs> that I can yeah. assure you. The, before we wrap, I, I must get in. Um, a, a young man, young woman comes to you and part of the part of the church system and, and, and all of a sudden he or she is doubting Christianity. How would, you, how, how would you address that? Have you ever doubt Christianity in your young years coming forward? Not really, I haven't, but my brothers, I have two brothers, mm -hmm. when they left to Trinidad and went to university away, they stopped with the church. And they began, they returned when they got married and they had kids they had to bring up. It is a normal part of life to doubt. It's very normal. We have to help them, not by what we say so much, but by our lives. You see, and young people pick up double standards very easily. Mm -hmm. Parents tell them one thing, but they see their parents doing something else. That doesn't help. But when young people can look back and say, you know something, I never saw my father in skullduggery, I never saw him in extramarital relationship, I never saw my father in this. Then they, they look back and say, there must be something in the religion. Why did my parents live like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a big part of the problem. Mm -hmm. and Parents very often are giving double standards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want you to close on that camera for me. Uh, this year we are approaching the Christmas season, mm -hmm. the end of the year. Uh, an early message to Trent Tobago from your grace, the house of the Archbishop. When I haven't thought of Christmas yet because I've yeah. <laughs> been going into Advent just now. Uh, right. <laughs> but Christmas reminds us not only that Christ came, but that Christ will come again. Mm. And so the question is, will, be, will we be like the shepherds who welcomed him, or will we be like the inn where there was no room for him? Mm. And to some extent these days, Christmas is becoming like like the inn, there's no room for Christ. We have brought in all kinds of things so that Christmas is no longer about Christ. 
Christmas is about shopping, is about fetting, is about soca parang, is about a whole host of things. Only when Christ comes back into Christmas will Christ come into daily life. And so my hope and my prayer is that we can get our people to be like the shepherds, welcoming Christ once again. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need more time with you, but my producer is <laughs> wrapping me. Thank you so much for your You're time. You're very welcome. Your God, God bless you. Father Joe Harris, taking time to speak with us and sharing a cup this morning on a cup of Joe. So glad that we could be here at the Archbishop House to do that, uh, to kick off our Christmas season here on a cup of Joe. We're doing it the way we want to do it, and he was one of the gentlemen uh, that we wanted to get uh, going into this, this Christmas season as we round off the year on a cup of joke. We take a short break, we come right back. More to come. Joel Shares a Cup is presented by American Stores, where we make quality living affordable since 1950. Girl, all my furnishings are from American stores. Quality living made affordable. Come, let me take you down to American stores. At American stores this Christmas, make all your holiday wishes come true. Choose from many styles of comfortable living rooms starting at $29.99. Elegant dining rooms starting at $12.99. Relaxing bedrooms starting at $11.99. And a chance to win up to $1 million in the American stores cash queue. All at American Stores, where we make quality living affordable. My name is Marcos. I'm an avid mountain biker. Every chance I get, I'm on the trails, on my bike. But like anyone else, I hate cleaning my bike. So what I did today is I sprayed one of my shoes and half of my bike with Rust-Oleum Never Wet. The results blew me away. The spray completely repelled the mud. The shoe was clean after the ride. It means less time cleaning and real protection from water damage. I'm an avid mountain biker. Every chance I get, I'm on the trails. So what I did today is I sprayed one of my shoes and half of my bike with Rust-Oleum Never Wet. The spray completely repelled the mud. It means less time cleaning and real protection from water damage. All right, welcome back, folks. We are in what we are calling this season the Copper Jew Workshop. Yeah, we're in the workshop, we're on the outside. And uh, this segment is what we're going to be introducing as Try It Tuesdays. Yeah, on a Tuesday, AS Brightons, their hardware and household division, will be providing us a range of different products, different do it yourself kind of things that you want to do at home before the Christmas season. Interesting products every week here on A Cup of Joe. The first product that we are going to be introducing uh, is what you call Rustolium Never Wet. I have the product specialist here with me, Mr. Wesley Adams. Thank you so much for trying to help no me problem, no become problem, a construction man. man. No problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first thing, um, let, let, let's officially introduce the, 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 the product, uh, Wesley. It's, it's Rustolium Never Wet Multi Surface. It's a liquid repelling treatment. I'm, I'm seeing all sorts of surfaces. It prevents water, mud, and ice from sticking to multiple surfaces. That's correct. That's correct. That um, sounds almost too good to be true. Yeah, welcome to the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, this is rust -oleum Never Wet. It's right. a super hydrophobic treatment mm -hmm. for um, to repel water, mud, ice, and other liquids. Um, I must say that it's brought to us by rust -oleum. Mm -hmm. Um when you think of rust you think of a leader in spray coatings for rust prevention, um, product protection, and product beautification. So this is just a new product from them, a mm -hmm. cutting-edge treatment for products. Um, essentially, it protects anything you wanted to protect. You see the, the list of products that you could spray it on and list of the variety of products we have out here. So it works on all surfaces? Any surface. Um, it will work better on some surfaces than others. Right. Um, if I were to explain it, what I would say is that breaking it down, it's a super hydrophobic product, a super mm -hmm. hydrophobic treatment. Super, which means very extreme. Hydro, which means water-based, so it's really gen um, it's mm -hmm. water repelling. And phobic, when you think of the word phobic, you mm -hmm. think of phobia, you think of aversion, you think of, of um, avoidance, you think of repulsion. Okay. So when you put that together, you get a very extreme water repelling treatment, super hydrophobic treatment. Because, because the pictures on the box, it almost shows like 
the it, it, the surfaces, right. the water is rolling off a duck's it back. It rolls off. It rolls right, off. Right, Correct. Right, yeah, um, yeah. If you if you were to think, if I had to put it in into, if I were to put it into an analogy, right. um, if I had a cup of water and I poured it on a floor, right. what would happen? The water would land and spread, spread generously on the floor, on the floor right, yeah. as much as it can, right, distribute itself evenly. If I were to do that to grass, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you see dew. What That's happens? Right. You see balls of water on the dew, not so right. uh, on the grass. Right. You see balls of water on the trees. Actually, that's a self-cleaning um, mechanism, natural self-cleaning mechanism. What happens is water lands on it, forms perfect spheres, rolls right off. So that's the principle that we're applying here, or rust has has applied to create this product. So the same thing would apply to whatever you apply to, whether it be wood, metal, PVC, you name it. Serious. Yeah, very right. serious. Let's get some demonstrations. All right. Yeah. We'll get straight into let's it. Let's see the product at work. What, right. what surface is this? This is just a surface that has been coated with, um, with it's plastic, coated with the, the product, right? right? And well, it's colored, so you'll. Ordinary plastic. Sir. Ordinary plastic, ordinary plastic. Right? And this is ordinary drinking water. Yeah. Mm. Right? <laughs> wow. And pour a little more. And if you notice. We gain that, guys? Whoa. The water cannot settle. You seen that? Yeah. You seen that, boy, Joel? So you spray any you surface, spray this. and this is what happens. Yeah. To quote Danish Ramnan, talk now. <laughs> Talk now. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so this is plastic. This is plastic. Uh-huh. Right? I'm gonna leave that there. This is wood. Right? This part here is treated. This part is untreated, right? Right, right. right. So that's the treat so it untreated so part. So it, it, it soaks into the into right. the wood. Untreated, right? Right. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. So this could actually preserve Right, wood, correct. Wood, wood so, what, as well. I said, the, the, the principle is that if rain falls on the grass, they need to clean themselves. Right. They need to clean itself. So, the water just roll off. Right? It's actually called the lotus effect. So, the same principle applies here. We're trying to keep something clean. Right. If it's dry, it'll be clean. Right. Right? So, this is metal, coated and uncoated. This is the uncoated side. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the coated side. It is literally see, see literally off. water is remaining there. And the, no water is on this side. The question is how long when, when, when you spray this on, how long it lasts? It depends on the environment mm -hmm. um, that you put it up, apply it to. Right. Um, abrasion is a big factor. Right. For instance, let's say I spray it on the hallways of City Gate. Right. That's abrasion. That's heavy abrasion. Right. So it wouldn't last as long as if I spray it on my porch, for instance. Right. Where there's no traffic, you know? Or, for instance, if I spray it on, if I'm a banker and I spray it on my shoe, I'm tired of getting wet in the rain. Compared with a footballer, if he sprays it on his shoe and he goes kicking, right, kicking around. Right, right. So it will last longer where there's less Based abrasive. on the circumstance, right, right, based on, on, on what you're using for. Correct. So as you said, shoe. We have, we have a shoe here. Correct. So this is ordinary. That is an ordinary pallet, man. An ordinary kids. Right? If I dip this in this water. Go ahead. By all will, means. It, this is untreated. Untreated. Obviously, the shoe will... Yeah, it, it gets wet. Gets wet, right? Right, full wet. I mean, we, we can see the, Correct. the wet, right? Correct. You're telling me now, I'm going to... I have the sheet. Yeah, what you need to do, Tell shake me. it. Well, shake ensure it. that your product is clean and dry. Right, okay. right, right. And shake it as much as you could. You really should shake it for a minute just to make sure you get all the, 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 um, the components going. Right. Right, and then when you're done, you apply it. Evenly. Evenly, Ooh. in a sweeping left to right motion. Come about six inches away from it. Yeah. Yes, nice, nice. Left and right, up and down. That's all you do. Left and right, up and down. Beautiful, beautiful. I can do this before? Yeah, you're looking like a pro. Yeah. So, and it, it obviously, it just has to be thoroughly coated with, with, with yeah, the Yeah, um, depends on how much you want it to breathe. Right. Um, but this is the base coat you're applying. So you apply one coat of that, let mm -hmm. it sit for 30 minutes. So let it sit for 30 minutes. 30 minutes to dry, right? And then you come with the second coat, right? And um, Oh, so you let this sit 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It dries. Right. Then you come with the second coat. You apply a second coat. Yes, the top coat. Is a base coat and a top coat? Right. You apply it and bam. And then, and then, folks, this is the finished product. This product Correct. has been sprayed if you notice, twice. You can hardly tell any difference between the two products. Right, right. right. So let's, 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 let's just, just show. Just dip the head in. Yeah. The water not not not. See that? All right, let's let let's let's go. You see that? You see that, right? I see it. Yeah. I'm. They say seeing is believing, and I still not believing. <laughs> I still. Yeah. Literally, folks. If you feel, 
the sneaker is dry. Correct. The sneaker is still wet. This one, the sneaker is still wet. Yeah. The CC in SB Divin are still not right. Divin. Right. Welcome the, to the future. This is, this, is a, this is an untreated cushion. Untreated right? cushion. Right. So basically, you're just trying to get some ideas. You put on your shoes. If you have outdoor furniture or you want to make furniture right. outdoor, you all you have to do is apply some never wet. And I could do the same thing here. Spray it on, sweeping motion, six inches. You, if the wife say, boy, you will mash up my cushion. Well, prove her wrong. Prove her wrong. And Left the same, right, the, down. The, same, the same process in terms of half hour. Yeah, half hour. No matter what the, no matter what the, um. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, no matter what the, the surface is. Half correct, hour. Correct, correct. You, you let half it drive hour. half hour, a second coat. You should really try to, if you know you're going to be using it seriously, let it cure overnight. Give it a 12 hours. Right. After half hour, you could, you could use it. And basically, this is a finished one. This is a finished article. Dip finished that article. Bad boy. Dip it. Now, uh, you seen that? You seen that? <laughs> Let me try one more thing. <laughs> you seen that? Dry. Dry. Unbelievable. Where was this product all the time? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this product question, on, on the market yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's no on market. It's no a relatively market. new product. Um, basically, yeah. Um, yeah. Distributed by Brydens. Right. I can get it in most hardware. Yeah, it's available on hardware across the country. If yeah. you want, um, customers can call into ES Bryden and ask for um, directions to the nearest store. Right. Um, Rustolian is a big product. It's all over there, all over the country. So, hey. Yeah. Wesley, thank you very much. No Rustolium. Problem all, no problem at all. Rustolium, never wet. All your surfaces. You can even like concrete on your, on your, on your concrete driveway. Concrete, you just, PVC, fiberglass, glass. I, you, Anything you don't want Anything water. Anything you don't want water on. And you want to protect means, from water. Well Fantastic. Means. Every week, uh, right here on Try It Tuesdays, uh, one of the product specialists from AS Brighton will drop by and just show us little fix-it things, little things you can try at home and get done over the course of this holiday season as we get ready uh, for the big holiday on Christmas Day. We take a short break here on a cup of joe. We come right back. More fun stuff on this Tuesday morning to try. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> Try It Tuesdays is powered by A.S. Bryden, Hardware and Housewares. This is water. You've never seen it behave this way. Imagine a surface being rained on, but never wet. Spilled on, but never wet. Submerged, but never wet. Introducing Rust-Oleum Neverwet, a revolutionary super hydrophobic treatment that causes liquids to form perfect spheres so they roll off surfaces like never before. Just spray it on and it's never wet. Find out more at rustoleum.com slash neverwet. We're back and yes, this is Tuesday on a cup of joe. Yeah, we are on every day of the week now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and bringing you a couple new interesting segments as the show moves along. On Tuesdays, we've brought you in the past, buy local, cook local. Well, on Tuesdays, it's all about buy local, made local. Yeah, supporting Trinidad Tobago. I have with me, let me just get my bling on. I have with me Modupe Onilio. I hope I got the pronunciation correct. Onilio. Onilio. Modupe is of uh, Viombo Designs, Trinidad Tobago. Uh, he has a wide range of products uh, that he's going to display for us. Of course, I think these will be handmade products. It's uh, such a pleasure uh, being here. Welcome to Akapa Joe, uh, Modupe. Um, tell us, tell us what, tell us first of all the, 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 the creation, where, how did you come up with the range of products that I'm seeing before us? Well, the name of the, the line is Viombo Designs. Viombo Designs. Viombo Designs came from the umbrella body of all the different things I do, mm -hmm. um, Jewels of Nature, which was founded by the late, great Jaja Onilu, okay. musician. And me and my brother has been um, carrying on the works, and this is what we have today. Most of our stuff are made from natural, organic materials from right in the rainforest in Cora, where we have set up our workshop. Oh. And uh, we do all the hand carvings, all the cleaning, all the branches, donkey eyes, cedar wood, yeah, cane, mm -hmm. coconut, gubef. 
Right. Oh, yeah. So when, so natural organic yeah. material. Yes. And and that's what you just kind of outlined there. Yeah. All, all those things that you I suppose you get in the jungle, in the yes. forest. Mm -hmm. And that's what you use to basically create everything here. Yeah, man. Um, the creativity is, is is very. This is really one of those uh, like a hand hand yeah, band, female, yeah. female female hand band with a uh, yeah. yeah so, a so you literally have taken natural products like Google Beth. That was a thing that you used to see a long time ago. Yeah, the donkey eyes. Donkey eyes. Yeah. So these are earrings. Yeah. Tell us about tell us about the range. I mean, for both females and males. <laughs> All right. So we have this earring here. Mm -hmm. It's a hand painted bead with coconut. Top and bottom. So again, the hand painting will be a more kind of a modern twist, mm -hmm. and the coconut will be the natural organic material. Oh, right, right. So apart from using the natural materials, we also use a little. You modernize it. Modernize it yeah. for the wider audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the younger modern audience. Right, of right, right, right. Oh. I'm seeing some chains as well. Yeah, we have the natural chains, like for more unisex. Mm -hmm. Oh, but a lot, of, a lot of guys go for this because of the, you know, the chunky look and the natural right, look. Right. We have donkey eyes. We have different shades of donkey eyes. Donkey we have eyes, the red. Yeah. We have the little ones that look like leather brown. Yeah, I haven't and seen have donkey eyes in a long time. Long years, yeah. right? A lot of people um, connect to these donkey eye necklaces because of that same purpose. Right. Because they have this memory of school where yeah. you used to rub it on the ground and burn your partner and, or yeah, your yeah. friend or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are like, yeah, I want the donkey eye yeah, chain. So yeah, yeah. this is like one of the donkey eyes. And this one I have on here is, is a similar. Yeah, that's, a, this that's is not wood. the donkey eye, but this is wood. Yeah, that's like the, a, lot of, a lot of guys now going for the Buddha chains, as you will say. The Buddha chains? Yeah, the big chunky look I have on one here as right. well. So this is like this all wood with a little dash of the modern colors right, inside right, of it. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice clean look. Mm -hmm. Nice clean look. And of course, mm -hmm. the female stuff, where well, a lot of the females go in for these days as the statement pieces. Okay. We have this spiked wooden with some semi-pressure stones and some amber and some other semi-pressure stones as well. Right. And very intricate because, yes. I mean, and you said you, you all do all the carvings and, yes, and, and that and kind of thing. Yes, all the and everything. And everything. So mm -hmm. this, this would take... A lot of time, yeah, yeah. a lot of time. And then we have the more the calabash stuff. This is a calabash bangle right. for the females. Right. All hand carved by my brother, the older, more skilled <laughs> um, craftsman. craftsman. <laughs> yeah. He does all the intricate right, um, right. carvings yeah, and all yeah. the like all the, these mirrors. He will carve out the face of the mirror. Right. And that kind of vibe. Right, 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 right. And of course, calabash is very popular in Trinidad. Right. People drink out of it, eat out of it, bathe with it. Yeah. And of course, we take it to the next level by doing one of a kind, exclusive, organic jewelry. Right. With the calabash. Lovely, lovely, lovely. lovely. So literally, you 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 you've done a range of stuff yeah. using using purple heartwood. Purple heartwood. Yeah. And these are these are like long earrings for the yeah, females. For females. For long earrings for the yeah. females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A host of earrings. I mean, you can get mm -hmm. all different, different according to the female style, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, and and basically, Viombo Designs, uh, you are located in where Cora. In Cora. Yeah, but of course, we could find online mm -hmm. where most of our sales being going like through Facebook and Instagram. Cause everybody's connected. Right. Via and, social and media. And it's it's, it's Viombo Designs. Yeah, Viombo Designs. Viombo Designs. Um, your contact number. Let me leave some contact information because uh, uh, Modupe can be reached at three six three zero zero nine zero. We'll put the number uh, at the bottom of the screen. Viombo Designs TNT. Uh, he can be reached for all the orders that you need. You literally can place the order. Yes. Um, based. On, I Call suppose what you or email, yeah. But based on what you see on your Facebook page, yes, how people, or Instagram, yeah. or, or Instagram. That's what we've been doing for the past year. Yeah. Internationally and locally. Right. And right. we also do the um, the, the monthly craft markets up market at Woodbrook Youth Facility. Right. It will be found there on the fifteenth of November actually. Right. So you're with in the, the whole you're, display of everything. So you're in the in the markets in as the well. Markets, in the, the up market, in stuff. the craft markets as well. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, looking for that Christmas gift. Um, it's, 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 right, it's, yeah. it's perfect. Um, I can throw out a few, a few hints. This kind of looks good on me. Yeah. Hold <laughs> look on me. Yeah. Christmas gifts. I, I, I'm, I, I'm accepting. Uh, thanks so much uh, no for, problem, for man. Thanks a lot. dropping by here on a cup of Joe. And every week we will present a different craft. Buy local, made local, right here on A Cup of Joe, uh, Murupe and Viombo Designs. Check it out and, of course, buy your gifts accordingly over the course of the season. We take a short break here on A Cup of Joe. We're coming right back. Stay with us. 
My name's Marcos. I'm an avid mountain biker. Every chance I get, I'm on the trails, on my bike, but like anyone else, I hate cleaning my bike. So what I did today is I sprayed one of my shoes and half of my bike with Rust-Oleum Never Wet. The results blew me away. The spray completely repelled the mud. The shoe was clean after the ride. It means less time cleaning and real protection from water damage. I'm an avid mountain biker. Every chance I get, I'm on the trails. So what I did today is I sprayed one of my shoes and half of my bike with Rust-Oleum Never Wet. The spray completely repelled the mud. It means less time cleaning and real protection from water damage. Why settle for a one-note cereal? Get more with Honey Bunches of Oats. Four nutritious grains come together for more taste, more texture, more healthy satisfaction. Have a bowl of happy. All right, folks, that's it. Yeah, our first Tuesday edition here on A Cup of Joe. Remember, just a reminder, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on five days a week here with you now on A Cup of Joe. So you can join us every day of the week. And our first Tuesday went pretty well. I think so. You know, we made a little road trip. We made it back in one piece. <laughs> you know, it's a little skeptical of your driving, but it's fine. We made it back. <laughs> we made it back. We made it back. We made so it a lot back. of fun today, Tuesday, inside of a cup of Joe. And yeah. you know what? Let's uh, wrap it up and talk it out. Talk it Tuesdays? Talk it Tuesdays. Well, yeah, you find plenty of tea words to go with. I know, because, yeah. you know. Tech Tuesdays, talk it Tuesdays, try, try it Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Hey, it's what I do. Um, <laughs> Ebola. Ebola. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I just thought I'd that is not a T word, put it out there. It's yeah. not a T word, <laughs> and it's not an issue to be played with. No, I mean, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of conversation about it. I don't know if I feel as though people are doing enough reading mm -hmm. and enough uh, education of self. Because we, we don't read enough. In no, we don't. Yeah, we, yeah, don't yeah, we don't, and it's yeah. aggravating. Yeah. But I won't jump yeah. on a soapbox. Yeah. What I would want, what I do want to talk about, though, um, we've been hearing rumors and uh, things being bandied about in mm -hmm. terms of should we cancel carnival because of the ebola potential epidemic pandemic whatever um should we nonsense i agree no 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 i, I quickly said nonsense because when i heard the reports um i i, I was all the country and then mm -hmm. i came back and i started to hear that's what's Mm -hmm. That was what was bubbling, yeah. And bubbling. Um, that was my first reaction mm -hmm. because I, 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 I was abroad mm -hmm. and I heard no, no organization, no country, no state said, okay, because of this threat, we're going to, that's outside, mm -hmm. we're going to shut down any festival, festival. or anything of that nature. Uh -huh. why, why do we jump straight to shutting down what yeah. is the biggest thing in Trans Tobago? I feel it is testimony to the fact of how reactionary we are. Yeah. We are a reactionary society. And the reason why I say nonsense is because I feel as though if it is we're serious about talking about a threat mm -hmm. that is a clear and very present danger, how have we gotten to carnival that is months down the road? What are yeah. we doing right now, right now this yeah. moment? What are we doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as such, I can't take any conversations about cancelling carnival yeah. seriously if I feel as though um, I can't... I feel as though we haven't made preparations to deal with it now. And that's not even diminishing what mm -hmm. a serious threat Ebola can be to it our can shores. Be, yes. um, yeah, yeah, that's not diminishing that at all. But the reality is, mm -hmm. why, why did we jump there? What, I don't understand I don't why, understand why, it why we jump there. And the point you know? is, too, it's not just, I feel as though there are so many stakeholders where Carnival is concerned. You can't just, I, I, I don't understand how shutting down Carnival seems to be such a simple go to. Yeah, yeah. I feel as though there needs to be so much discussion and mediation and and, and, and public forum, but then we know how great we are at that in TNT. I mean, thousands of people will be affected. <laughs> of thousands course. of people will be affected you know, if that so happens. So, I mean, I, as I said, I don't agree with it off the surface. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to see probably how it goes over the next couple of weeks and, and, and see whether or not, Fair. you know, yeah. Talk it out yep. Tuesday. Yep, that's, that's what it. we're gonna do to wrap the show. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us as always inside of a cup of Joe. Yep. Uh, if you'd like to touch base with us, agree, disagree, maybe with something we just said inside of Talk It Out Tuesday, mm -hmm. you can drop us a line via Facebook. Uh, check us out on a cup of Joe TT, 
actually cup of Joe TT. If you want to send us an email, we are a cup of Joe TT at gmail.com. And you can follow us on our YouTube channel or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, you can check us out on Cup of Joe TT, all the episodes. If you missed us in the daytime, you can check us out anytime. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, La Cantina. Thank you, Amanda Faces of Belarus. Thanks, crew. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Wild and wacky Wednesdays. Thank you.